Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. In this video, I'll ask the question, what is the best USB mic in the world? In order to answer this, I'm going to be testing and sampling a lot of popular USB mics. In fact, the most popular USB mics in the world, so we can figure out which one is the best. Starting with this one here, the Bayer Dynamic Fox. All I'm going to do during this video is use the accessories provided, so the stands and everything, and the Fox comes with a nice little tabletop stand. It's also got a pop shield integrated as well to stop my plosives going off. And on the back, a rather interesting low or high gain switch. So at the moment, I'm on the low gain. I can flip it across to high. That's loud, so now I need to lean back. I need to lean right back because this is super loud. This is kind of across the room loud. A little pro tip here, you can change the volume of your microphone using your computer system settings, not just the switch on the back of the microphone. So if you go into the sound settings and you look for your input, here is the Fox microphone. I can now easily turn this down and see the volume going lower and lower and then turn it back up uh, to as loud as I want. Back to low, as you could hear, I was distorting there on high. So high is generally, if you're going to sit that on the desk, uh, maybe out of shot if you are doing a live stream or something like that. I like the simplicity of having a switch low and high. I don't necessarily need a volume dial, so that's cool. I also like the fact that this is 24-bit, 96 kilohertz, so top maximum quality. Very good thumbs up, Bear Dynamic, and they happen to make my favorite headphones as well. So here is a sample of the Bayer Dynamic Fox USB microphone in my recording studio. Here I am in my living room, just to make sure I give a fair comparison. I want to test these USB mics out in an untreated sound room so you can really hear the difference. This is the Bayer Dynamic Fox on low gain, and then I can switch it across to high gain. I'm going to sit all the way over here. I need to go even further back, maybe over here. How about over here? Okay, over here it's still picking me up and distorting, but it's a real high gain there. And then back to low gain, Bayer Dynamic Fox, as I may use it in any room. How does it sound different to the recording studio version? Now we're switching over to one of the big daddies of USB microphones. This is the Blue Yeti. No pop filter included with this one, but it does have a mute button, just like the Bayer Dynamic Fox had. It's got a volume control, and on the back you can change the gain via a dial up and down, and you can also change the polar pattern, so you can go figure of eight if you want to get front and back, have yourself and a guest included, or omnidirectional if you're recording music and you want everything from the room. I kind of like the simplicity of just a cardioid polar pattern. If you're a creator, then that's all I'm going to be using as a podcaster or YouTuber. This is the cardioid mode that I'll be using that sort of heart shape, upside down heart shape that gets everything in front of the mic and rejects most of the stuff from the back. So generally, the Blue Yeti has been around for a while. It comes in a bunch of different colors. One thing you may not know, though, is that it's only 16 bit and it goes up to 48 kilohertz. That might be a deal breaker for you, especially if you really appreciate good audio quality or if you're recording music. Okay, I'm back here in my unsound treated living room. Uh, this is the Blue Yeti popular microphone for people to use. Often they'll have it right in front of them on cardioid mode like I have it here. Uh, but sometimes you'll need to sit further back. Uh, so how does it sound when I'm leaning further back in a room with no sound treatment? Blue Yeti Blackout Edition. Okay, the next mic to check is the Samsung Satellite. It's got an old micro USB to USB type A connector that goes in. It's got a monitor for headphones as well. I like the fact on the front, it's got a light that goes green when it's recording, red when it's clipping, which is very handy, and orange when you're muted, so you know that. I'm in the cardioid mode, again, a common mode that content creators will be using lots. It's a very simple mic, it's quite small, it's got a flexible tripod built into the microphone as well. And a little bonus, so you actually get a lightning cable with it as well, which is easy to use uh, to plug it into your iOS device. So something a little bit extra there included if you need to record on the move. Okay, we've teleported into my living room to test out the Samsung satellite in here. One thing I note is the gain is extraordinarily high on this one, so if I shout too loud, it is going to distort. This is clearly designed to be on the table in front of you and probably out of shot. So this is the Samsung satellite microphone, USB connection into my MacBook Pro in my living room. Here I am with the Elgato Wave 3, brand new mic from Elgato with a twiddly volume knob on the front, a little bit of an LED display to show you where you're monitoring, so headphones, computer mix, microphone only, and the volume levels, plus a cool feature, tap to mute, you just tap the top of the mic 
and it mutes it. The thing that most impressed me about the Elgato Wave 3 was the software and the fact that it integrates natively with Stream Deck as well for muting, increasing and decreasing of volumes. And, of course, the inside capsule is designed by Lewitt Mics pretty decent microphone manufacturing company there. So all in all, this is my recording studio sample of the Elgato Wave 3. This is the Elgato Wave 3 in my living room, testing it out in a room that has absolutely no sound treatment. How does it sound? Maybe I'll lean back a little bit. I can also mute it. Unmute, there you go, the Elgato Wave 3. Here is the Rode NT-USB Mini. This is a pint-sized microphone that looks very cute. I think it's designed to be super subtle. So if you're doing something that's on the screen, for instance, YouTube, webinars, uh, some of the previous mics have been very, very big and in your face. This one is tiny and you can place it on the desk in front of you. It's got a twiddly volume knob on the front, USB-C connector on the back, and a cool magnetic, uh, as I lift it off, uh, a magnetic microphone stand uh, from Rode there. So this is the Rode NT-USB Mini, as I try to get it back onto the stand magnetically. There is an art to it. Uh, inside my recording studio. This is such a cute little microphone. It's sitting on my desk here in my living room. I'm checking my levels, they're looking fine. This is the Rode NT-USB in a room with absolutely no sound treatment and a little bit of reverb as well. The Rode NT USB microphone. It is also worth testing out the AKG Lyra, which is a new offering and the first offering from AKG microphones who've been in the business for around 70 years. It's got a nice retro look and high quality audio with a number of polar patterns, adjustable volume for your headphone monitoring and for your microphone gain, mute button on the front. And generally, if you want a mic that's gonna look good on the screen, this could be it for you. This is a sample inside my recording studio. AKG Lyra here in my living room, no sound treatment here. As I talk into the microphone, probably sounds pretty good, although there's a lot of chance for echo and reverb from this room. I can lean back a little bit so you can hear the AKG Lyra sound check from an unsound treated room. And I am going to give a final bit of airtime to this, the <laughs> Audio Technica. ATR 2100. It doesn't want to sit in the right position for me. Sorry, the stand that comes with it just doesn't get it in the right place for me. But that aside, the ATR 2100 has since been superseded by the 2100X, which I understand is pretty similar to this. It's just modernized, maybe a few better specs in there. So the ATR 2100 has notoriously, or maybe famously, uh, been popular amongst podcasters because it is a very cheap, cheap and budget entry-level USB microphone. This is is what the Audio-Technica ATR2100 sounds like inside my recording studio. Okie dokie, let's give the Audio-Technica ATR2100 a go inside my living room with no sound treatment. I do need to get really close to this. The gain is not very high when I'm recording in. I notice this has the lowest gain of them all, but hopefully when I'm nice and close, it sounds pretty decent. So there you go, here we are back at the beginning again. What, in your opinion, is the best USB microphone in the world? Let me know in the comments down below. Music Radio Creative.com